show us your tips. Daggy and Beaver with you for a midweek preview. We've got Canterbury and Sale to look at. Uh, just on a quick backup from the Footy and Frothy show. Check that out on Spotify and YouTube as well. But uh, here I am at the Grey Gums Hotel to look forward to what the racing is tomorrow. Beaver, how are you travelling, buddy? Yeah, mate, I'm travelling well. Um, good to join you and chat a little bit of midweek racing. Uh, had you, what did you take out the weekend? Impressive. We, we just for the record nailed both Melbourne qualities, I believe, and uh, a few winners throughout the day. Did you take any out of that? Yeah, look, uh, not a bad day um, at all. Some, I thought, uh, a few, in a few cases, pretty tricky. I thought there were some rides um, that probably didn't give some of the, the horses best best chances, particularly up in Durban, got well back in the field and proved it was sometimes a little bit hard to run on. Um, but overall, um, yeah, pretty fair day. What, what was your take? Oh, yeah, everything played pretty well. Uh, some comfy watches in times. Uh, the Oaks winner was impressive, I think, has something to offer. I True. don't know how strong that Oaks may be. Obviously, we see three-year-old Philly stuff fall apart as we go. Uh, and Melbourne played largely as we expected. Uh, maybe we should be more bullish on Teofilo Star for what it produced. Uh, I think yes. uh, the 400 metre race you can trust. Uh, I, th- I think you can largely trust the format of both. I think red cards got plenty upside. We followed all the way through. And yeah, I was just going to say, I was just uh, going back over my notes. Red card was, was way too good there. Um, my, my friend Munamek, um, you giggled at me Very when good. I said uh, it was a good chance. I knew it was uh, only because I knew it was coming. Impressive. Yeah. Um, uh, Quantico, I thought was pretty disappointing. Uh, didn't run on at all. The winner there was pretty, pretty good. The Prince of Boom. Um, so yeah, that was sort of my take out of, of Eagle Farm and uh, Bendigo. Uh, no, Flemington was. Uh, Similar, I think you're right. Uh, you got the nice pick up with um, to fill a star. Uh, Shay Shayar was good. Uh, yeah, we picked was. we picked that one out. Uh, Beaver was on King Magnus. We got the I think we got the Nella there, King we Magnus did. and yeah. Jimmy the Bear. Um, so so a pretty good take out of when you when you think about it out out of the day. Yeah, and um, party for one. Oh, party easy watch one. and um, very. Yeah. Now that Blake Shin's got it going, very good. So stick with her. Yeah. We head to... We'll, we'll Excellent. Keep, yeah. Let's find some winners at Canterbury. Where we, uh, we'll we probably end up on the softish track. Rails in the six metre mark. Don't want to be too far from the rails, I'd suggest. And we kick off with an 1100 metre race for the two-year-old fillies, a maiden. How are you starting today? Yeah, interesting way to start the day. But I'm going to stick with uh, the Cummings McDonald combination here. Blue colours, um, tried pretty well uh, for this, uh, winning the trial nice at Hawkesbury. Uh, looks to be above average and should run well. Agreed. Love that trial. Love that last trial of commemorative. Uh, gets a great run. Look, James McDonald, I don't want to say it's a concern, but I, I'm not giving him the uh, elevation the market still sort of does, but I uh, should just camp on the leader's back and be very hard to beat. Power Ballad comes through a nice enough form race. Winners, well, well Tudor, whatever her name was, should have come out and won in the weekend. Uh, ran third there, gets the lead, and is the obvious danger. Uh, yeah, J-Mac, we've found a lot here, and I'm going to find a lot throughout the day. And yeah, same, same. yeah um, I'd like to see him put in some of his best stuff, put it that way. 12.50 Maiden is up next, though, where we... I'm going to go with the blue colours again. I think we're going to have a decent enough day here. Magic Carpet was in some pretty good two-year-old stuff, has now had uh, been given plenty of time, has come back once in each time. Ran OK, put out, put out, put out, come back here and has put in two great trials here. Simply, I think she's better than Philly's Maiden. Great, I think she's going to run well, run well here and be very hard to beat with Clippo jumping on. Uh, and Nostalgia has trolled up well enough. Uh, it uh, will grab the lead on the fence, which may be advantageous and it'll be hard to beat. Uh, and Princess Ray is one I think we've both had an opinion of. If it does get out to a price, uh, I'll cover on it. But uh, best best result's going to be Magic Carpet uh, in this race. Yeah, no, I've, I've flipped them. I've gone for Nostalgia to run well here. Again, favourite, but... Uh... 
again, I liked the trial. I thought the first uh, run, um, last preparation was good. It's only run, then put out. So um, hoping it can get to the lead and control and be too good. The third is a two and three year old maiden back to eleven hundred meters. And I think the market's got this right. I love the I love the trials of Balkans here. I've noticed it's been on the drift today, but uh, uh, I thought it tried up really well. Gets a comfy row run from Clippo. Things can be very hard to beat. Uh, Pink Shalala has tried really well on pace as well. It may well find a fence now with these scratchings, and is the main danger. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm going the same way as you. I've really liked the trial of Balkans as well. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be super hard to beat and should get the right run here. Um, I think we can get off to a good start here early in the day at Randwick with the first three favourites uh, winning. Beauty. The fourth uh, is the benchmark 72, the 1550. Uh, Flashing still looks to get the same run it got as two weeks ago where it grabs the fence, rolls along, and, uh, racks off and wins. I think it's going to do the same thing here. I can't see a heap of pace underneath it. High ball is going to have to do a bit of work to cross it. And I just don't think there's any chases. Money from the sky was if any, I know it's coming back from uh, a higher grade, but it was if a little bit disappointing to me. So around a 250, I think flashing steel is a good bet here. Uh, surely J-Mac doesn't mess this one up. Yeah, I thought the same as well here. It looks like it's going to get control. Um, winning form is good form this time of the year, and that winning form has been pretty... Um, impressive, uh, winning comfortably on the last two occasions. Uh, hard to go past. Uh, and you're right, there doesn't seem to be a lot of chases here. Um, big, big chink Torre, uh, pretty comfortably last start. I can't see it turning uh, tables there. The fifth 1100 metre benchmark 72, one of the more open races on the day. Who do you like here? It is one of the more open races on the day, and uh. Not helping the punters a lot here, but I'm going to go for Petulant yeah. um, again. I, I think, I really think you can have a good day here tomorrow um, with some of these. It's one of my better bets on the card. I just think this horse um, is a progressive type. Um, this is a fairly average field that it meets here. It's drawn well, um, and I think it can get back in the winner's circle um, here. I agree. I don't, I don't particularly want to charge into anything here. I know to spend money for it since I've done the form, but I think uh, Petulant and Zane Sabah Gem get the best runs and probably fight out the finish uh, in that order. Yeah, now it's starting to firm in. Do I really want to rubber stamp it? Not really, but um, they are on top for me. The sixth, we're again, 1,100 metres, which is the story of the day. Benchmark 72, uh, where... I am going to go with one here at a bit of a price. Uh, Master Showman comes back from Saturday grade, sat outside lead there, and I thought it was pretty brave. Uh, just got stuck out there. Uh, and a reasonable race with Sashino and Plundering, um, finishing in front of it. I think back here, I think gets a nice uh, run. I hope it doesn't get posted again, but with Preble, there's a slight chance of that. But around the $8 mark, I'm going to go with it. Uh, and I'm scared of the two at the top here, Huon and Deep Snow, who both have some reasonable credentials and, um, again, our each way price. I, I think I'm going to work my way around playing all three of them and take on the others in this field. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm going for one down in the weights. I'm going for number 10, King's Duty. Okay, yeah. Uh, resuming here. I've liked the trials of, of this horse. Um, both been pretty good. Um, but at Gosford at, and Musselbrook, and prior to that... Um, most of its forms was in sort of Port Macquarie, um, Newcastle area. Um, but I think it uh, can run well here first up and fresh, uh, drawn well, and I think not bad price. Awesome. We're wrapping up with a 1,900 metre benchmark, 72. Big field, and uh, at first at first sight I was a bit, a bit put back by it, but if, is anything sticking out to you? Yeah, I'm going Queen Maker. Yeah. Um, Racing in great heart. Uh, last four starts have been all good. Uh, two wins, two, two seconds. Um, gets in well enough here. Its last start win was uh, very impressive. Um, and even its runs before that were good. Gate five in this big field um, sets up nicely here. It's a bit bomb proof. It'll, it'll be in around the pace and uh, hard to beat. 
given the main danger is drawn in the car park. Yes, I, um, I'm with you. I'm with you. That was, it was an average race it came through, but it smashed them. It was very impressive. Ran away and gets just a great run here for Clipper, who's in for a good day uh, and is on top for me. Uh, easy bet to have here. Um, I've got a little bit of a feeling here about just a Jedi third up. It's a bit of a gunner, but at the 20s uh, with Dylan Gibbons jumping on, I might have a save or at least throw into a quarter if I'm going to have that. But um, I thought it sort of stuck out at the end of the day for me. For progetracing.com.au, which is where we do this show, I'm going to make my best, uh, well, Sam Clipperton, he's going to have a good day tomorrow, I'm hoping. But uh, race three, number two, Balkans. And my value, race six, number three, Master Showman. What are you thinking, Beaver? Yeah, I'm going race five, number seven, Petula. Mm -hmm. That's my best bet. And my value bet comes up in race six, also number 10, King's Duty. Lovely. Uh, let's head down to Sale, where we've got a half uh, half hurdle meeting to get through down there. Yeah. So we'll, we'll whip through this, probably not leaving a lot for us, and given we're neither of us are particularly yeah. keen uh, Jumping judges, uh, but we kick off on a soft track with the rail on the five meter mark, and uh, we're kicking off with a maiden hurdle. We might rush. Do you want to rush through these, or have you any caught out in the first sort of four races here? Yeah, we'll have a quick flick. Um, the first race, uh, I'm going for the favourite Royal Crown mm -hmm. third up here. I think it presents okay and looks well schooled to run well here from the Kent stable. Yeah, same. Uh, Again, another bit of a gunner over the jumps, uh, over the flat, but over the jumps, I think, will uh, improve from a breed, as the market suggests, is what we see, is what we get. Muhammad Ace has half been one of, your horse in, one of yours in the past. Over the jumps now, does it run well here? Uh, I think it can run well here, but I'm going for something a bit more value here. I'm going for a Quillian uh, from the Ma Eustace stable, uh, about the six, seven dollar mark. I think it can run well here and just looking uh, for a little bit more value in an open market. Yeah, I um, was giving that's incredible a chance on the flat last time out. Inside gate perhaps runs well at the each way price. The third is a uh, benchmark hurdle here, and Cernan uh, was pretty impressive there, bolted in last time on the flat. Uh, ran away from an average field, comes to the jumps here, I think is an easy bet to have. Uh, and if you, uh, from a wagering point of view, I think this is one of the better bets on the card, number four, Cernan. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, you took the words right out of my mouth. Number four, Cernan, uh, one of the better bets on the card. I feel like you're going to say the same about number one in the fourth, Casto Frank, uh, oh, Francaro, so you can do it. Yep. Uh, I've got a uh, similar opinion here. This one's a little bit shorter, but uh, this is a jumper on the way up and it will take care of this field fairly comfortably. As long as it stays up, it will win. The fifth, we then get to an 1,100-metre two-year-old race and uh, I'm going to be completely honest, I had no idea here. I went through everything, spent a lot of time in this race and I can't give you an answer. Do you have anything here? I have no idea as well. Cool. Um, it's a really open. It's five's the field. Uh, a lot of the ones in the first four in the market are uh, uh, all first starters. Um, so really hard to pick a, a winner here. Don't feel so bad. But, um, yeah, uh, this has been one of the less impressive previews we've done. We've got a 1,200-metre class one race. There's a couple six. of winners in there. There really. are. Well, you know what? Um, those first four hurdle winners... If you're going to have an all-up or a Yankee or something similar, I think they all win, but, you know, what are we saying? Uh, what do you like here in the sixth? Yeah, look, another open field here. I've gone for um, number nine, Miss Jenny Lynn. Um, yes. Only had, only had the two starts, uh, first start of its career, uh, started uh, sort of reasonable odds and ran very nicely behind supporting and then uh, put out for a spell and returned in fine fashion. Uh, showing speed and fighting on nicely in the straight uh, gate two. I think give it a bold sight. Nearly a double figure odds here. I like it. I um, I think there's two chances. I think it's that, and you've covered that off. And the favourite queen of the green, dropping back from a group three grade to a class one fifty eight. That was wasn't the worst run in the world. They're chasing uh, those mares and right back in grade won't know itself up on pace. 
I think runs well. I think they're the two hopes that you can cover both right now at the prices, and that's how I'm going to play it. Uh, we've got a staying race here, 2,232 metres, benchmark 64. And uh, again, the market's got this right. I think Dawili off the two-week uh, turnaround from last time out, track and distance, will run well. And the main danger is whichever pain runner turns up, whether it's Alabama or Crew Class, they'll both, oh, either one of them, they've both got Luke Campbell, so it'll be one of them here. It'll be the main danger. What are you thinking? Uh, no freaking idea. This is one of the worst races I've ever seen in my life, so I didn't bother having a pick here. I'm sure a few of them will end up over the hurdles down the road. 1736 benchmark 64 is the uh, second to last. And I'm going to stick with uh, Remigus here off the scene of last time out chasing uh, Sir Rockford. Not a bad race here. Uh, gets blinkers. Daniel Stackhouse should be prominent and I think runs well. Uh, terrified of funny if it won because that was a complete non-event last time out at Sandown. Probably should have almost been the finish. Uh, got chopped out there. Only got out late and wasn't knocked around. Lightly raced. Claim on for Pat Payne and may well blow him away. Uh, and by the time we get to race day, may well be my best result. But I think they're the main two. Uh, Lavish Finker, obviously a chance breaking through a couple of weeks back. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, I've gone for Lavish Finker. I uh, like the way it broke through. Third up here, I think it's got some natural improvements. Um, hit the line strongly last start uh, over the same distance. So I think that suits and drawn well enough to get a good run. And Stokes is going good at the moment. Mm. So I do like uh, his horses, particularly in Melbourne. Let's wrap it up with a 1,419 metre benchmark, 64. Who do you like in the last? Yeah, um, I like number 15 here, Ivan's Hero. Uh, I think it's going to be super hard to beat. Um, she had some good form when last in work behind um, some decent quality horses. Uh, I think uh, this sets up nicely for it. Uh, runs well enough fresh uh, in the past. Drawn well. Uh, looks a good bet. Agree. Yep. On top for me. Uh, I like the uh, a decent form there around your Locos and Gringotts of the world. They're better than this. Uh, and the Wall of Formula with his middle distance horses, put him out for a short spell, sort of 90, 100 days, bringing him back, getting up and going. They do win a lot fresh, so I'm going to uh, have it on top. Uh, not much to add. Tricky race for me to find a best in value. Uh, or tricky. Uh, card, I should say. Have you got a couple for us? Yeah, my best bet is race nine, number 15, Ivan's Hero. And my value bet comes up in race eight, number five, Lavish Thinker. I'm at my best race three, number four, Cernan. I think that's going to run well. Yeah, tricky one for me to find some value. I, I do think Lavish, I think the three in the market there, Lavish Thinker, um, Lavish Thinker, Remigus, if you can get each way, both of them will run well. Anything up north? Yeah, I've got a couple up north uh, at Doombin. Race five, number two, Eaglemont. Race six, number nine, Mintaka Lad. How about number that? Seven, Nash race... is uh, Nash up there, eh? Yeah, stayed up there. Good on him. Race seven, number 10, Ring of Steel. Beautiful. And he's on the favourite in the last Orient Secret. Awesome. We'll be back uh, this Thursday night to look at Stradbroke Day Beaver, a massive day of racing in Queensland. Looking forward Looking to that. Forward to it. We've got uh, whatever the support program is from uh, Melbourne as well to touch on. Looking forward to all that. Check out progetracing.com.au. Subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, all those good places. Uh, you can find the Show Us Your Tips social media page on Facebook uh, as well as the Progret Racing page Follow them and we'll talk to everyone later in the week. See you guys.